Okay, today we are going to work through the integral or the antiderivative of the cosecant function. Now cosecant is closely related to its sister function, secant. So with secant being 1 over the cosine of x, the secant of x being 1 over the cosine of x or the reciprocal of the cosine of x, cosecant is of course the reciprocal of the sine of x or 1 over sine of x. So the approach to integrating these two functions are very similar. And to my mind, there are two main ways that we can do this. The first way is through partial fractions and substitution. Let's have a look at this approach first, and then we will explore the second path. So with cosecant of x being equal to 1 over the sine of x, the integral is really the integral of 1 over the sine of x with respect to x. Now it's impossible to perform the integral of 1 over the sine of x without manipulating this integrand a little bit. So let's find the equivalent of 1 over the sine of x in an integratable form. Now 1 over the sine of x being a fraction, we can multiply this by sine of x over sine of x. So effectively multiplying it by 1. And this becomes sine of x over the sine squared of x. Now the bottom term here, I'm going to use the Pythagorean identity that cos squared of x plus sine squared of x is equal to 1. So I can express the sine squared of x as being equal to 1 minus the cosine squared of x. So the fraction becomes sine of x divided by 1 minus the cosine squared of x. Okay, now what I'm going to do is to make my first substitution where I'm going to let the function u equal the cosine of x, which means if I take the derivative of this function with respect to x, so du on dx, this differentiates to negative sine of x, and I can separate the differentials here and rewrite this as, or rewrite this equation as sine of x dx is equal to negative du. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So now the integral of 1 over the sine of x, which is equal to the integral of sine of x on 1 minus cos of x squared cos squared of x dx is equal to the integral of negative du sine x dx is equal to negative du divided by 1 minus u squared with cosine being equal to u. Okay, so let me write this more neatly as the negative outside of du on 1 minus u squared. Okay, so the fraction that we have to deal with now, if I change colors again, is 1 divided by 1 minus u squared. And of course, the denominator is a difference of two squares, that being 1 squared minus u squared. So I can rewrite a denominator as 1 plus u by 1 minus u. Okay, going back to basic algebra. And writing uh, the integrand like this, I can separate this now into two partial fractions. So I have something over 1 plus u plus something over 1 minus u. Okay, now the process of finding the numerators, I'll leave a link to in the top right-hand corner up here. But if I just take a shortcut and by inspection, using the cover-up rule, you'll find that the numerators equal one half and one half. All right, so let's bring down the next line. So we have the integral of one minus u squared du, du not dx. Uh, we have a negative in the front here, which we must not forget, which is this fellow here, is equal to the negative of the integral of one half on one plus u plus one half on one minus u 
du. Okay, if I go ahead and separate these two integrals now, I can rewrite this line as the negative of a half outside of the integral of du on 1 plus u minus a half, so take the negative in, take the 1 half out the front of the integral of du on 1 minus u. Let's change colors again. So we have this results in negative a half. The integral evaluates to the log of 1 plus u minus 1 half. The second integral results in log of 1 minus u. And of course, we must not forget the plus c, the integration constant being an indefinite integral. So we've made a little mistake here. The log of 1 minus u is correct, but we've got to divide by the derivative of what's inside here, and that's equal to negative 1. So this actually becomes a plus a half. Let's now take a negative a half out the front. So we have log of 1 plus u. If we take out a negative half, the second sign becomes a negative again by log of 1 minus u. Let's leave the plus c on the end. Let's change to a more uh, sensible color. This purple is a little bit uh, polarizing. Sorry, this orange is a little bit uh, polarizing. So we have equal to negative 1 half. Using our log laws, I can combine these two logarithms and that's equal to the log of 1 plus u divided by 1 minus u. And u, of course, was equal to cos of x. What we're going to do now is to simplify this a bit further. So the negative half remains, the log stays the same. What's inside the log? Let's have 1 plus the cosine of x on 1 minus the cosine of x. Let's multiply this by 1 plus cos of x on 1 plus cos of x. So effectively multiplying by 1 again. So what this results in is on the bottom here we have a difference of two squares again. So we can rewrite this one as 1 minus cos squared of x. And on the top let's write this as 1 plus cos x all squared. And reversing our Pythagorean identity, the denominator here we'll write it as sine squared of x. Okay, so we've got a square on the top and the square on the bottom. Let's rewrite the uh, log in, the negative and a half. We've got a square on the top and a square on the bottom. I'm going to take the square outside and we no longer need the parentheses at the top. And if we observe our log rules again, we can bring down the power to the front as a coefficient. So that means the two and the half cancel. Now what's inside the log bars again, I can write as one on sine of x. I can split the fraction plus cos of x on sine of x. All right, so one over the sine of x We established at the start as being equal to the cosec of x, the cosecant of x. Cos of x on sine of x is the reciprocal of the tangent of x, and that's called the cotangent of x. So we write that as cot of x for short. And of course the absolute value bars and the log, we just copy down, the negative stays out the front. The plus C we copy down as well, we bring down here, and finally we say that the integral, the indefinite integral of the cosecant of x with respect to x is equal to negative of the log of the cosecant of x plus cotangent of x plus C. Okay, let's now have a look at the second approach, which is to get the integral into the form of 
f prime x on f of x, which the result is the log of the f of x plus c. This method is a bit less intuitive, so let's start with the cosecant of x. And we start by taking the derivative, so the derivative of the cosecant of x, which is equal to the negative of the cotangent of x by cosecant of x. And you can find this result by doing the derivative of 1 over the sine of x using the quotient rule. Let's find another derivative. Let's find the derivative of the cotangent of x because the cotangent is also quite closely related to the cosecant and this derivative gives negative cosecant squared of x. So adding these two derivatives together, so the derivative of cosecant of x plus cotangent of x is equal to negative of the cotangent of x by cosecant of x minus cosec squared of x and I can factor out a negative co squared cosecant squared of x sorry cosecant of x I can factor out a negative cosecant of x and what I'm going to be left in brackets is cotangent of x plus cosecant of x and uh, I'm just going to switch the uh, things in the brackets around just switch the order so I'm going to write this as negative cosec square uh, sorry cosec of x outside of cosec of x plus cot of x and you'll see why just in a minute Oh, well, because it's, we get the same order as the derivative here. So now, what does this have anything to do with the function that we're trying to integrate? So let's start with cosecant of x again. And if I multiply this by a fraction, if I multiply, if I multiply this by the term negative cosec of x plus cot of x, divided by negative cosec x plus cot of x. So effectively multiplying by 1 again. I can rewrite this as the negative of cosec of x outside of cosec of x plus cot of x all over. Now with this negative term I'm going to bring out the front. So it's negative by the negative of cosec of x by the cosec of x plus cot of x divided by co cosec of x plus cot of x. Okay, so the cosec of x is equal to all of that. So what good is that? Well, if I let the function f of x equal cosec of x plus cot of x and I know that the derivative of the function the derivative of f of x is equal to this fella here then cosec of x becomes negative of f prime of x divided by f of x okay so that's pretty clever and then the integral of the cosec of x is equal to negative of the integral of f of x, f prime of x on f of x and of course the result is negative of f of x, negative of the log of f of x plus the integration constant c. So substituting the f of x back into the log we have the integral the antiderivative of the cosec of x with respect to x is equal to negative of the log of the cosec of x plus cot of x 
plus C. And this, of course, is the same result as we got above. Okay, so see how you go and uh, see if you can replicate this result. That'll do it for this video. If you found it useful, please give me a thumbs up and please share it with your study mates. Subscribe to my channel for future videos that may help you with your math studies. If you have any math questions, please use the comments section below and uh, ask them there. Till next time, best of luck with your studies and I'll see you on the next video.